Hi everyone. Welcome back up to the off-grid cabin. So it's a beautiful day today. It's uh, still winter as you can see. But the sun is out and I think it's plus two degrees Celsius. So it's a beautiful day, clear skies. Nothing but sun, it looks like. So today, I'm about to get started on adding a couple panels to my solar system. You can see up there, I've got the four 100 watt panels. So I am adding two more right below those four. So there's gonna be six 100 watt panels in total, so 600 watts. I'll bring you in here and show you what. This is also a new addition. I got a smaller uh, chest freezer, a new one. So I'm super happy with it. It barely uses any power. And uh, it's uh, big enough for what I need. I just fill it full. Let's see what we're bringing in right now. So 29.1 volts, batteries are almost full. Let's see. It's only bringing in 108 watts right now, 2 amps, 76 volts, so it's just topping up the batteries, as you can see right here, they're almost full. I'll bring you inside and show you the two new panels. I'm a little disappointed because those are uh, Renogy 100 watts and they're the black panels. So I got the black panels because I thought maybe it'll keep some snow from sitting on the panel or it'll track more sun and heat but I couldn't find two more black panels. So I ended up getting Renogy silver panels. So that's the only difference. They're the same model. This is them right there. It came in a two pack. So they're the RNG 100Ds. I've been happy with the Renogy so far. Those four have been working fine for me. So I stuck with them. So I've already got them. These pieces of wood are what I'm mounting them to. And then I'm just gonna carry them up like this and attach them to the solar panel mount that I built last time. There's a couple things you need to be aware about uh, when you're adding panels to your solar system. So one of the things you're gonna have to look at is your open circuit voltage of the panels. Look on your charge controller to see or if it's one of the all-in-one inverters look on that to see what the open circuit voltage that it can handle and then if you look on the back of your panels all panels should have a label that shows you the power they produce right here that'll have open circuit voltage and optimum operating voltage so you want to look at the open circuit voltage, which this one is 22.3. So you're going to want to multiply the open circuit voltage by however many panels you have in series and make sure your charge controller can handle that. If the panels are wired parallel, then it's going to just increase the amps and not the volts. So you just have to, however your panels are configured, you just want to make sure you don't go over your charge controller's open circuit voltage that it can handle. I'll show you guys here what it looks like in my 
manual for my all-in-one inverter and charge controller right here I'm the the 2 kVA 24 volt plus it says max PV array open circuit voltage is 145 and then the MPPT voltage range is 115 volts so the 145 volts is your open circuit voltage you want to make sure combine all your panels and make sure it's under that your optimum operating voltage mine is 18.6 that's where you want to compare it to your MPPT voltage range you want to make sure you're under the 104 or 115 volts <laughs> Still gonna be able to lift up and sit up on these uh, pieces of ready rod. Probably around end of April I'll lift it up because the sun will be higher in the sky. Been a moose hanging around right up here behind the panels. So the first thing I'm gonna do is disconnect these from the inverter. So that will be my one negative and that will be my one positive. So this one will go positive to negative, positive to negative, positive. That's not going to fit. So I'm about eight inches too short, so I'm going to have to make up a cable quickly. I'll just make up a new cable for like a 12 inch. All right, I took a lot of digging, but I finally found my leftover 10 gauge solar panel wire 
and a couple MC4 connectors. Oh, I made up a 14 inch extension. So I should be able to hook everything back up now. Let's head up here. I don't mind the silver panels, the two silver ones. So this is my positive, so it's going to go to negative. And then this positive is going to go to this negative. This positive goes to here, and we hook back the negative, and we set up power. So like before, these are all in series. So this panel down here, this one, the positive is going, and then it's using the negative of this panel, the first one up here. So these are the two that are ran down to the inverter charger. So let's go down there and see if it's registering and sending power. Sass has found a stick up here to chew on. This is the worst snow to walk in because it's melted enough that I sink and we still have probably 16 inches at least so it's always going over my boots. So now let's take a look in here. So this shows right here that panels are connected. Right now it's getting 287 watts. Let's see how many volts. 102 volts, so it is reading them. So that's that, they're working. Didn't trip the breaker down here for the solar panel wire, so that's uh, 30 amp, but there should be, really the amps didn't increase at all, so it's still six amps. That's what it looks like. So that does it for this video. I got the extra two panels installed. 
and they are working and sending power so I'm up to 600 watts of solar panels so that should help for the cloudy days or the days when the sun only comes out for an hour or two. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.